your alternative talk radio contact, the planet, KGRARadio.com. With infinite complacency, people went to and fro of the earth about their little affairs, serene in the assurance of their dominion over this small, binning fragment of solar driftwood, which by chance or design, man has inherited out of the dark mystery of time and space. On this edition of Into the Fray, I have on with me the team from OK Talk. That would be Clinton Granberry and Matt Stoker. Welcome, gentlemen. Hello, hello. Hello. It is quite early in the morning. It is still dark outside, so it's a good ambiance for what we're going to be talking about. Uh, What we are going to cover very uh, quickly uh, in the scheme of things, I might add, because I know that all of us are able to go on for hours and hours and hours, but time is of the essence, is Devil's Creek in Washington State, which you guys have covered pretty extensively on OK Talk already. Yeah, and I mean, what do you want to know about that place? What, what's to, what to say about it? Right, because there is a lot to cover, and uh, I think that we kind of need to just get to the meat and taters, if you will, of this property. And I I do want to give people a good background on it in case somehow they have not heard any of the episodes of OK Talk where you guys speak on Devil's Creek. So a real shame if they haven't. It really is because if they like my show, I know they would love your show. Uh, I've brought up many a times on End of the Fray, so shame on you guys. All right. So there is a couple, Donna and Greg, and they have a couple of hairy children named Bridget and Layla, a couple of dogs, and they find a property in Washington State. Now, do you guys know how they actually came to find this property, or you know, was it love at first sight, so they had to buy it? Yeah, it's, it, it was a vacation home for the previous owners and had been rarely used. Uh, it seems like they came across a pretty good deal on the place and made the move. It's 
a little bit away from anything too particularly busy. And basically, they moved in September, what would be three years ago. So almost three years to the day. And they they were very clear in saying that this was their dream home, right? Like this is this is the kind of place that they were looking for. Yeah, yeah. They had horses, chickens, uh, some goats, and this place afforded them the ability to live in a stunning, stunning home and have. There's two barns on the property. There was a horse pen down by the tree line. So uh, a great view. And I can't assume at any point and haven't heard from either one of them that they ever thought that they would end up not wanting to live there. In fact, moving before they had sold the place, that it was that uncomfortable. Greg actually works quite a bit. He would travel 70 80 percent of the time which left donna who is a former photographer for nat geo just an amazing lady in and of herself and certainly not the kind of person that you would think would be afraid to be at a home by herself in fact they're both adults and they can handle being away from each other and she has a routine of getting up in the morning tending to the animals on the place And Greg uh, would travel and it just so happens within a week, maybe two of them moving into the place that she had the first odd experience. And that would be that she saw uh, what, what I believe would be commonly referred to as a Sasquatch driving up the hill to their home on a Sunday night within mere feet of her. She was in the passenger seat of the car. He was driving and it was standing beside the road next to the Creek and to know her now, as it has probably been for most people who've had that kind of experience, it was a life changing moment. And she was the only one that saw it. Greg didn't see the thing. They get up to the house, and this is interesting. Almost immediately, the the noises, sounds, I think they even heard knocks in the woods that evening. Heard something run like through the foliage down at the wood line that night. As if that isn't enough, where the story really comes in to play is that they were kind of as at a loss as to what to do and contacted Derek Randall's from the Olympic project and Derek and David Ellis went out there as they do and kind of took a look around. They were pretty positive almost immediately that this wasn't a situation where it was a woman hoaxing all of this activity happening at her house. Okay, guys, let's take a quick break with a word from our sponsor. These days, you can get practically everything on demand. Like my podcast, you can listen whenever you want, when it's convenient for you. But did you know you can even get postage on demand? All you need is stamps.com. With stamps.com, you can access all the services of the post office right from your desk all available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. In fact, I have already begun utilizing stamps.com from my home office. All you do is click, print, mail, and you're done. You can weigh your letters and packages and print the exact amount of postage every time. Right now, use F-R-A-Y for this special offer. It's a four-week trial, which includes postage, and a digital scale. But don't wait. Go to stamps.com before you do anything else. Click on the radio microphone at the top of the homepage and type in FRAY. That's stamps.com. Enter 
F-R-A-Y. While they were there, David did like a mouth pop into the woods and got a response. And uh, they provided her with a recorder and her routine would be to go out onto the porch, place the recorder outside and she started to record every night and she would wake up in the morning, get the recorder, send the audio for review. And again, almost immediately, especially because this happened in the fall and the time of activity in that area is the highest from September through December, January. That's when it's they're on the move. And so it was a, a fast and furious awakening. And I guess that's kind of where we are in terms of leading up to the audio chance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just to reel back really quickly, um, you know, David actually sent me his PDF file. I forget what it's titled, like Skookum, Skookum Hollow. It's his just, you know, recounting of what he went through personally and meeting Donna. And during her sighting, you know, Greg's looking off to the left, he's driving and she sees the Sasquatch, which she can describe in, in pretty good detail uh, because it was very close to her. The thing that struck me was that Greg says that Donna does not curse. She doesn't use expletives for anything, but they were spewing forth from her mouth and she just kept repeating, they are real and they are really here. They are real. And this put Greg like into his own little panic because he's kind of going, what is going on with Donna right now? She is freaking out. And now I'm freaking out because she couldn't even get it out what she had seen for quite some time. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, I guess I would say that more than any, that's part of the story in general is that he knew immediately that this, she doesn't play. She is not fronting no games. Donna does not. I'll just have you know that anyone who comes across her realizes that she is legit. I mean, she is a badass. Oh, and can, can I just bring up something that I heard on your very latest episode of OK Talk was like a revisit for Devil's Creek and something highly interesting about Donna. And when you say she's a badass, you were talking about how she used to be a photographer for Nat Geo. Well, the one of her assignments was to go out in, it was the Amazon, right? And hunt for anacondas. And she goes, oh yeah, you know, you have to do that in the middle of the night. You know, just very matter of fact. And you're kind of going, wow, go Donna. You know, hunting anacondas at night in the Amazon. That's that's one of the things that impresses me so much about this particular story is when you hear about her life experiences. This is not someone who... I would say shies away from from wildlife. I mean, mm-hmm. obviously they, they they live, you know, more or less out in a, in a remote location in Washington State. So I'm sure they're absolutely and with her life experience, they're absolutely used to seeing all types of animals around uh, around them or having encounters with them. And for her to have been so shaken by what she saw and then what she continued to experience until they eventually moved speaks, I think, volumes to me about what exactly was going on there. This was not some uh, encounter with a normal bit of wildlife, at least not into not in her estimation. This was something that really, really uh, upset her in, in, in myriad ways. So mm-hmm. I, I, I think you know, that, that lends at least some validity to her story and in, in, in the fact that um, she has, uh, you know, faced deadly creatures, things that I would not really want to want to tangle with and, and still says, uh, I'm out when it comes to this, this piece of property. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the story in and of itself is basically her story of being who she is. And then going from being a woman that encountered wildlife to being so terrified that she wouldn't go downstairs after dark, let alone outside. Mm. I mean, she was putting the recorder outside when it was still light outside. And obviously in the winter, it gets dark rather early. I mean, she wouldn't go downstairs. Yeah. And we're talking about inside the house. We're not talking about downstairs off. the. We're talking about a woman who's been in the jungle taking pictures of anacondas and remarking about how you can 
you got to identify them by the eye shine. Yeah, that should put it in perspective for folks uh, about what was going on. And and just remember, as we said in the beginning, Greg, her husband, was gone most of the time. Period. He was just gone. He's a he's a busy guy, and just like she's she's busy with what she has to do around the house. Remember, they have horses and the goats and the chickens. It's not like you can just kind of up and leave that situation. How long ago did they move out of that property? It's been a year and a half, maybe. I do know that the couple that rented the place wasn't there a full year. They had already yeah. moved. Yeah. So that was... And they were out when we first talked to them. So that's... 2016. Yeah. A couple of years, probably. Yeah. So what, what, just really quick, just to touch on this, because I know people will be wondering... What about the previous tenants of the place? Have we heard from them? Does, do we know why they left? Well, the previous tenants, it was a vacation home. So they were hardly ever there either. But has anybody been able to, you know, have we heard anything from them at all? It's hard to track, you know, just vacationers down. But I, I know we haven't heard anything from them. Okay. There, there is evidence that there may have been other people who lived there who had some issues. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes if you have the same real estate agent, not that they like to disclose, especially something maybe as strange as this, but I was just wondering, wanted to touch on that. So they, so they were probably there maybe a year, moved out, bought a farm further away, put the house on the market, did not have luck, knew a couple, uh, a younger couple that had just had a baby and they were almost doing them a solid. These were people from their church and they moved in and they were there le- less than a year and okay. then moved out. And, and the house is moving towards being sold as we speak right now. Right. Yeah, because we know that Don and Greg have completely abandoned the idea of taking that property up again. So that is done. Yeah, that's not an option. Yeah. Not an option. All right, well, let, let's touch on some of the activity around the property and tell a couple of the highly interesting and slightly terrifying stories. So, Yeah, I, I think the, the audio evidence, that, that's the other thing that's fascinating about this place is multiple years worth of recordings. Mm-hmm. And when people hear this kind of story, especially in this community, People are looking for every reason to shoot a hole in this thing. Yeah. But there's no question about it. People are either looking at a reason to shoot a hole in this thing or people are copying her story and going on some other show Mm. and telling Mm -hmm. lies (laughs) because it's so fascinating. And so when I address this with people, as I have recently, who have no idea about this subject or aren't into this at all, it's what we're about to play that is the thing that makes the hair on their arms raise and, and makes everyone want to know what the heck is going on. Yeah, I've had multiple people after we released our first episode with them, which I think has the largest amount of, of audio that we've played on, on our show about it. Um, I've had people who just listen to the show because they, they're friends of mine and they're, they're not necessarily into it to, or they're not up to speed on a lot of this stuff. And they'll come, they came back to me and said, that show you guys did with the Devil's Creek thing, um, I was sleeping with the lights on because some mm-hmm. of this stuff was just so eerie. Um, so, and it's and it's become one of the ones that I always recommend to people. Like, look, if you don't, if you don't buy into some of this stuff, just give this a listen and see where you, how you feel afterwards. And uh, to me, it, it has been some of the most compelling stuff that I've I've heard. Yeah, and just to reiterate, this is only a, a small portion of yeah. what I know has been captured on the property. Right. I asked David to send us five clips, five clips, this, <laughs> and he mm-hmm. sent me three emails with thirty-five each. I'm not kidding. He was like, no, hey, "Yeah, he forwarded them to me." That's yeah, why I've been able to listen to all of them. <laughs> I have emails that I haven't listened to all of them. There are blocks of audio that haven't been reviewed. Yeah. That's how much, I mean, when you think about recording eight, nine hours a day for a year and a half or so. I mean, we probably have dozens of, or not dozens, we probably have hundreds of clips. And to my understanding, that that represents a small percentage of even what's been been out there. So there's a lot of stuff out there. So um, let's play some of them, Shannon. 
Yes, and a couple of them need a little bit of a setup in the background as to maybe what is going on here. But uh, this one grabbed me straight away, so I thought we should open with the Crow Talker. These are Luke. <laughs> so that sounds like Jurassic Park outside your house, right? Period. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know. I think after I was there, there was a, a little bit of audio that I heard. I actually heard it through a parabolic when it was happening. And I'm pretty positive it was a red fox. And once you take it and you look at uh, the spectrum analysis of it, and the fingerprint of the waveform, you can kind of tell that. Most of this stuff right here is almost unidentifiable in terms of as known animal. Okay, that's what I wanted to get to really quickly before we move on because we mentioned David Ellis and he's basically the sound guy for the Olympic project and that's a big reason why he's, he's was called the property, right? Well, he can pull up his programs and say, yeah, this is not something I can identify. You can see that it, you know it, it is something making a sound with some sort of an intonation, vocal pattern. And at one point, he's even able to tell the fact that there is a certain individual that comes back, you know, at either night after night or a couple times a week, whatever it might be, and, and is actually around the property, and he can identify that individual by its spectrograph analysis. Yeah, well, and some of it you can just tell it's the same freaking thing. It's yeah. almost if it's there's one in particular we'll get to where you can tell quite clearly that it's the same thing saying the same thing. And there are definitely tones, but yes, everything that makes a noise makes a waveform fingerprint and the it was if it's the Smithsonian Bank of Sound or whatever mm -hmm. has hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and thousands of animals with multiple recordings of what they look like in a waveform and the difference between that and some of the other so that it's essentially a fingerprint for you or me or whoever. All right, let's move to Greg calls Layla growl. So yeah, uh, Greg is essentially in this clip, he's, there's the way that the property sits, there's two barns that are below the house. The house sits on quite a steep incline and the barns are down there. He told us that when this happened, he did not hear it occur. So this is one of the times when Greg is home, he's let the dogs out late and this was captured, and he did not hear this in real time. If that's too low, Shannon, you can obviously go back and... Yeah, I can, I'll just probably amp amplify the ones and make note of the ones that maybe I just I'll amp up a little bit and that'll be one of them. Yeah, it's no problem. You can definitely hear the growl. I would like to just bring Greg's part of it up a little bit. So I will certainly yeah. do that. Right, the depth of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you can hear it echoing. I mean, I don't know. It just, it does seem like something with a massive set of lungs to me, but no, so what do I, I know? I will say one thing that I thought that was really interesting that grabbed me about this story is, and I have the email chain when this occurred. One of, one of the things that Donna heard was she said that she was outside, probably with the animals, and she heard what she said was a drumming. And David is asking her how fast it was and everything, and Donna's replying to him in an email. And David sent her, a recording of a gorilla beating its chest in a zoo. When this was occurring, I was actually at the zoo and in the, at the Dallas zoo. And I watched a male silverback gorilla kind of get mad at other apes for coming around him. And he stood up and pop, 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 
and, you know, shuffled off pretty quickly. Yeah. What was sh- shocking was how hollow it sounds. It's like a wood block. And when you hear the drumming that she would end up ca- capturing later, that's exactly what it sounded like. It sounded like a hollow chess beat. Okay, so just to cover this again, these recorders, or that recorder, if there's only a single one, it was always on the porch. This is never placed like on a log in the middle of the woods on their property. Right, no. And okay. as she will tell you, she, would, she wouldn't go down <laughs> to the woods. To like play. even in the beginning though, right? Because right. she had already seen one of these things right. and was, was like, oh, idiot. hell no. She knew how big it was. Her exact words was, this thing is built for business. Yeah. And so, yeah, no, David tried to coax her to put a <laughs> record <laughs> closet to the wood line. Not having it. The really interesting thing about the property that separates it from and when people are thinking about this and, and how could this be, there is a massive ravine that I would estimate is when you're actually down there in it is 13 or 14 feet deep. Mm-hmm. I have some photographs of me outside of it like what it looks like on this side of, and then inside the ravine. And the thing is, we're talking about a coastal rainforest here. This place, the forest is almost enchanted in how big and just overwhelming it is. You can, this ravine acts as like a roadway and mm-hmm. you can be right next to the house and nobody at the house could see you. So that's uh, another reason why some of this audio may come across as shocking, but it is absolutely easy to see why something could be right there and you would never know it. Okay, next up, a short roar scream. Dude. That is such an eerie sound. Like, uh, like you mentioned earlier, like something out of a prehistoric time, just, you know, screaming in the forest. I, 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 I would be, I would never step foot outside again if I heard that, if I, if I were standing yeah. outside. And right. then, it's Clint, becoming- can we just bring it really quickly that when you were there, you actually had had enough at one point of hearing all these things going on and you, you had like a podcast blasting and you just needed to drown it out for a while. Right. Myself and then months later, David's daughter both experienced the exposure of sleeping next to a bay window and feeling like I didn't want to hear anything while I was trying to get some shut eye. And yeah, head under the covers, turn up some audio as loud as you can and try to get away from it. And you can imagine when you hear that, you can understand why Donna's. So you realize how this is playing out. These are recordings that then in the, ne- the next morning, these are the emails that she's getting back. Yeah, yeah. Hey, this is what's going on around your house at night. And, Sleep well. And Greg's exactly. on the road getting phone calls from his wife, who he does not understand why she ever, she, he does not know her as a person to be afraid. Now is, Greg, you'll never believe what's happening. And as we discussed with Greg, his thoughts were, very much of concern for his wife uh, and he didn't know what to think. And then obviously when, when we get around to the dogs, then that's when he said that it became more real for him. What else do we have up next? This is one of my favorite ones. And this will tie in with a lot of other Sasquatch tales that we've heard that people claim that they can in a way speak. Uh, it, It maybe sounds like someone, you know, that is mentally challenged, trying to speak or a deaf person trying to speak. And you guys are going to be able to hear that, uh, at least in this clip. So this one is called Greg Calls Layla. Then voice says, it's Layla. Layla, Layla, Yeah. So the other interesting thing about the dogs, there is a clip where it seems as something is trying to say both of the dogs' names, but it has an easier time with the name Layla. And uh, 
I remember hearing Matt go on the second name. It's maybe trying to say Bridget. You can kind of hear a B. The rest is quite lost and garbled, and it doesn't sound like Bridget, but you can hear almost like it's trying to say that full name. But it has a much easier time with the name Layla. Yeah, and um, we started referring to um, the sound as almost a uh, almost like a ventriloquist. Mm -hmm. where you're trying to form words, but either not using, you know, your normal vocal capacity or again, like you said, uh, perhaps someone who's, who's deaf or someone who's, um, you know, learning to speak or, or something like that, where it's, you don't have the musculature or you don't have the ability to form words, but you're able to get sounds out that sound very similar. So yes, yeah, some of these are, are easier than others. And, you know, uh, a perhaps a word like Bridget is just uh, very difficult depending on the shape of the mouth. Again, if you want to, um, you know, go all the way and, and try to assume what's going on here, um, you know, you can, you can see how maybe some words are more difficult than others, but they're, they're making attempts. And by the way, there is a native American term for the Sasquatch creature, which translates as ventriloquist. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of my favorite ones. And I know that, uh, no, okay. Oh, the other question is, usually at no time is Greg hearing this in real time, the mimicking. No, no. Okay. none of these that I don't believe that we're going to play are heard as they happen. Obviously, knocks, whistles, whoops, screams, those were heard off and on, depending. Uh, and Probably what's more frightening is running through the wood line that's right there and you have no idea as to why mm -hmm. all of a sudden it sounds as if a gigantic creature is running through the woods. Yeah, which you experienced. Yeah. Now, they also have a fence. I was reading in, in David's overview of what's going on there. There is a fence line. And he was walking the fence line because some things caught his eye. And then he noticed a, a plank, a board pulled away in a certain spot. And he looked through there and he's like, oh, look at that, a perfect line sight into the house. And every time they would put it back, the next time they'd go out and visit the fence line, it was pulled away again. So uh, a and lot of peeping toms going on there. And as recently as when there was work being done on the house, right. the board was pushed out and nailed back in and four days later it was pushed back out and you could obviously tell that the grass there is matted down yeah, because donna is going back out to the property to oversee some of the work being done because they are trying to sell property right okay all right let's move to nearby long hoop I mean, classic, classic Sasquatch noise. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. What's the next one you have on the list? Next one is familiar voice, thump, thump. I, I think this piece of audio actually illustrates something that, again, that they would talk about was the the feeling that if you're sitting in a room and someone left a tv on in three rooms over so you're hearing muffled voices but you're not you can't make them out you're not really sure where it's coming from and listening to that i'm i'm reminded of you know them talking about yeah we would be sitting there and thinking that we were hearing voices thinking that we were hearing you know, something in, a, in a, a, the back of the house or, or something like that, you hear it on the, on the recording and you can easily see how if you're inside and that's going on outside your house, that's how that might come across. Right. Well, and, there was one point, where Clint, where you brought up being inside the house and with, I think it was with David, you and David there, and you said, somebody got a TV on? I hear a TV. And like, no, there's nothing on. And that's when you guys went outside and you, you put the recorder down and you captured more stuff because it wasn't inside the house. It was Jurassic Park outside going on. 
Yeah, I, I've, actually, we we were recording the entire time. I just told them we needed to get that recorder inside because I've been hearing things. But yes, yeah, th- uh, um, that is a good example of that. Where are we on that list? We are wah vocal, double knock response. Again, I'm, I'm at a lot, you know, I think a lot of this stuff speaks for itself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know what uh, you say. You're like, well, and what are they saying to each other? That's the other interesting thing, right? I, I'm always impressed by the variety of sounds that are coming out here. I think we talked about it, Clint, you mm-hmm. and I, about how any one of these things on its own, you could say, uh, that's a bird, that's an echo, that's something That's something else, you know, that's a tree falling in the woods or, or something. But when you say this is all happening all at once and all the time, I feel like it starts to get harder and harder to find a cohesive explanation for what's happening unless you want to also include a lot of this stuff falls in line with Sasquatch activity. Right. This next one is pretty damn creepy uh family disagreement (laughs) so i guess we're hearing two distinct voices there it seems one like. of them sounds quite angry <laughs> with the other. Time to turn on that happy podcast and blast it very loud. Right. Mm-hmm. All right. Next up, voice shouts. Wahoo. Yeah. And the thing with the wahoo is that this is a sound that's been captured all over the United States and also the actual thing that. Yahoo Wahoo mm-hmm. is the name for the creature from the Davy Crockett time, mm-hmm. Kentucky. And, and also similar to the uh, Falk audio that... A little bit. Yeah. 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 Oh, well, yeah, you're right. The second time around for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. That. So the next clip is the drumming that you were talking about that you can hear when a, a gorilla does it at the zoo. But this was captured out at Devil's Creek. So one of those is a gorilla, and one of those is what was recorded there at the house. Uh, I, I think okay, the first one is the gorilla. Yeah, yeah, and and so that's the similarity. All right, next up, suspicious voices. Gosh, that sounds like singing to it me. It does. It's very sing song. Yeah. That would that's that's creepy to me. See, I don't like that. If I was outside on the porch just trying to enjoy a, a cool night, I heard that. No, nope, go inside. That's creepy. Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah, that does sound like a I don't know, just almost ethereal singing happening. Yeah. It sounds very feminine too, obviously, because yeah. with the sing song and it just sounds different than the other ones. They're especially the ones that are growling and even the, it's Layla. That doesn't sound very feminine to me. That Sasquatch is light in the loafers. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Somebody's watching out for her, so don't mess with mama. <laughs> All right. Here is the clip that I mentioned where something is saying Layla, and then we're, we're guessing that it's trying to say Bridget right afterwards. Yeah, um, can we start this just real quick? Mm-hmm. This is the one that's in the cadence of Greg. When Greg would call the dogs, that's how he would call them. Layla, Layla Bridget. Mm. Yeah. Layla, Layla Bridget. And I, I, I do believe hearing this was the thing that was the pack your bags moment. Yeah, so it's okay. it's more than simply copying or it's more than simply saying words it's copying styles it's i mean it's mimicry right it's it's yeah. trying to do the thing in the way that what they're hearing 
And then also that is the thing that gets the dogs to come to the house. Yeah. And that's what's in the woods. Have they ever been successful in the Sasquatches? I mean, in getting the dogs into the woods, not the dogs. There was an animal on the property that was taken and returned. Yeah. We're going to cover that uh, before we go. Cause I like that story. Hmm. Okay, next is Layla Woomp Knock. And that's very, very clear, the Layla, to me. Yeah. All right, last but not least, Whoopie or Wookie? What the hell? And again, that's a that's a voice that would show up yeah. months apart. Yeah. And return. Yeah, you're hearing these things come back again and again and again. Uh, individual voices. All right. So if you don't mind telling the story about Peep the chicken. All right. So Peep was Donna's personal chicken. And the one that would fly and sit up on her shoulder. And... There was a day when a lot of activity had been happening and she went out to the chicken coop and Peep was no longer there. And she contacted David, I believe used it expletives because she said they took him. And David told her, well, I know this is going to sound a little bit crazy, but go down to the wood line and tell them that you want it back. Now, think about how surreal of a moment that must be when you're in a situation where you feel like you need to ask for your chicken back to the monsters in the forest. And she said that if you want eggs, I'll give you some eggs. Well, Peep was returned, and she placed three eggs in a bowl on a post by the horse's pen. And the next morning, two of the eggs were completely removed. And then one of the eggs was cracked perfectly in the bowl with no signs of the shell anywhere to be seen. And the yolk was unbroken and just not. not right. Fresh. Perfectly. <laughs> like, like, right it's like Chip Ramsey went out there and cracked an egg for, for her. Right. right. I, the implications of that story to me are. I mean, astounding in the fact that you have someone who goes out and makes a request or uh, uh, offers a proposition, which I would have to assume that these creatures were not ready for, right? You're not, right. like, it would, it would imply some sort of understanding on their part of, of her saying, look, please return this item that you took. So they'd have to know what the item is. They'd have to know that she wants it back. And in return for that, I'm going to give you something else. And then that happens. It creeps me out to think that there's that. It's not simply uh, 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 something walking around out there just being an animal. It's something that can, can reason and make deals almost, you know, if, that's, if that story, you know, is what she says it is. It's unbelievable. Right. Well, what do you think that chicken went through, right? I mean, and if a chicken could talk, it's probably pretty good they're not very bright <laughs> animals because I think that thing would need therapy. You would think. You would definitely think. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, how long was it gone for? I'm sorry. Did I? I, 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 Honestly, I believe it was returned the next day. Okay. Wow. I don't know if it had a full 24 hours away or not. (laughs) Can't officially report it missing. (laughs) So I guess by you saying that, one of the reasons that we're here uh, and having this conversation is we are finally attempting to try to make a move on something that I have wanted to do for a while. And we're at a point now where the access and the ability to go to this place is about to be lost. And I think what, when people hear about this story, the thing that I hear the most about is why aren't there cameras or pictures or 
we're we're to the point now where that is what we're going to attempt to do. Donna and Greg have agreed to sit down on camera interviews at the property before um, it changes hands. So all of us here are all part of this endeavor. And essentially, uh, I want to bring a film, a documentary about Devil's Creek to everyone. And it's not going to be easy, maybe mainly because of the fact that we don't have a whole lot of time. I've been lucky enough to be put in contact with an excellent, top-of-the-line, award-winning group of people who are ready, willing, and able to go and to start filming. And the only thing is, we're going to need a little bit of help. And I, I actually don't feel comfortable coming and asking people for money. But um, I certainly have let people ask for money and <laughs> pitched mm -hmm. up for other people, as have you, Shannon, and obviously Matt as well. And uh, I do know that the fervor about this place gives me some thought that people will be interested in helping me and the crew fund this trip. And the initial cost is, I mean, it's, you know, 20 plus thousand dollars to uh, get this crew up there and do it right. So we uh, have a GoFundMe page established. And, and can I just say about this project that we're all going to have a part in? It's, it is, of course, about getting Donna and Greg on camera, but it's also for us to go out there and in the hopes of actually getting some activity on film for everybody to experience. And, and I think, it, you know, in case that hasn't, it has been explicitly stated, but it is worth saying again, we don't get another shot at this, right? This is... This is probably, I mean, who knows what the new owners are going to be like. And right. they may be, uh, they could be cool or they could be, we don't want to talk about it. You know, we don't want to mess with any of this stuff. We just want to live in our new house and we don't want people traipsing all over our property. Right. So the idea that time is of the essence here in that, you know, this house is going to be sold soon. So it could very well be lost to us. Something that we've gotten so much interesting so many interesting stories out of um we may not have access to it anymore so yeah it, it is important that you know we make this this is our this is our one shot to make this right right and i don't have the time to put a kickstarter together and gather up a bunch of merch and make a bunch of promises mm -hmm. the only thing that i can promise is at this point that if if we reach our goal which i'm pretty confident that we will with the people that should show interest in this that it's going to be unlike anything else that's been made that's what i feel like and and again the ambiguity of what will occur when we're there is another aspect of it all together right donna doesn't want to go back there okay donna doesn't want to sit down in the house and has agreed to it and the idea of being able to sit across from her in that home and talk about the stuff that she's suffered PTSD from is going to be fascinating. And then at the same time to be able to show you what it looks like to show you it's a magical place. And at the heart of this story is this woman and why would you not only move away from a place that was your dream home, but they've taken a loss on it. They've been carrying notes on the farm they purchased and this place. Mm. And it, it was more worth it to them to take it and pay two mortgages than to live there. Spend another day there, yeah. And just to reiterate how terrified she is of this property to this day, as you said, she didn't even want to go in the house to sit down and do the, the interviews at first and very hesitant. While we are up there, if we get the chance to go up there and do this film, she's going to be leaving. And the, the rest of us that want to stay in property, we can. Overnight, all day, whatever we'd like to do. She said, you have full access, but I am not staying there. Right. She said she's not staying <laughs> Right. And also, um, our, our producer informed me that she will not be staying there as well. Oh, after, oh really? Yeah, after listening to the whole <laughs> um, like flies. 
I, I yeah, want to yeah. I, I want to stress that this, this is a this is a thing. People are hearing this for the first time right now that aren't into the subject, and people are fascinated by it. And I can just say that everything that this show's been about, everything that your show is about, that this is this is our attempt to give something to the community, make something for people that I, th I think, I think it will be um, a game changer. And again, I had a conversation with Donna yesterday and we just had the short conversation. <laughs> the, what if we actually caught something on film? Right. You know, it was, it was, I, I haven't even allowed myself to go there. And right. yet uh, the possibilities are that if nothing else, it, we're going to bring that place to you. And uh, I will say our, uh, my man in Amsterdam, Dan Tolhurst, who created the OK Talk artwork for the logo, mm -hmm. um, both the Squattle, Squatch You Listening To logo and the original OK Talk logo has, he was so excited and spun up a poster. That's unbelievable. Unbelievable. I want that thing printed out on my wanted a, a giant print of that. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty positive that we can get to a place where at a certain level, people will be able to get the poster. Um, I don't like asking for things at all. And all I know right now is that uh, if you go to the GoFundMe and you help us get to our goal, you'll be made whole. That's all I can say. And I, I'm putting myself out like that. And okay, but also, can I just mention that just last night, Clint, you and I were talking about we have all kinds of ideas and brainstorming things going on for you, you donate at a certain level and above, you know, there's going to be exclusive access to, to content that nobody else is going to get. I mean, we are going to go there in person and be having these experiences and some of them will be shared with everyone and some of them will be shared with only people that back at a certain level. Right. Yeah. And that's just because that's something that we can offer. Right. I, I, the process is something different. This, mm -hmm. this is a little bit different than me and you and our friend. We have a camera and we go somewhere and we're going to do this. Yeah. I'm having storyboard meetings with people and that business conversations with people that are making my brain bleed. And I'm at a point where I don't even know if I'm going to be able to do this. And the only way that I can is if I have help. And um, Shannon and I have been talking about going up there for a long time. You and I have obviously been talking about going up there a long time, Matt. And, and I will say this for the Into the Fray fans, what is Shannon has always told me that she wants to have the scary experience occur to her. She went to Fox Hollow Farm and it didn't weird you out. <laughs> Nathan. Yeah. Uh, and, and yet, you know, I'll walk outside here in a minute and I'll see a ghost walk by. Just kidding. But, um, <laughs> pretty much so. I mean, really. <laughs> if, if you're a fan of Shannon's, which obviously you all are, I'll just say this, if this place won't work, th then, then she's actually the kryptonite of, I am, the I've crypt said it before and this will confirm it. If nothing happens. Yes. I'm trying to scare our girl here. And can we include the adult diapers in the budget for at the GoFundMe? Because I, I think, I, we, might I think maybe we can. I think maybe. Okay, we can. good, good. That's but, what I'm looking forward to. But yes, you're right. We want to bring all of it plus what we're planning on doing. And yeah. I can just say that the, the way that we're seeing this film play out, it's going, I think it's, again, it's going to be a game changer. But I'll just say, devilscreekfilm.com will be the landing spot. The GoFundMe will be there. Should have a video up today of some with some footage of the place that I took when I was up there that will be like a teaser video. We're going to have links to the podcast, audio, uh, some photographs, and it's also going to be a touch point place for people who are interested in it and the project itself and in the place. And I'll just say this, members of the people in the Finding Sasquatch world, I'll say that, 
who have mm-hmm. obviously made a lot of money because of what they have been able to do recently in the last decade or 11 years, if you understand what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. There were pleas to people to purchase the property. And um, it, it, the, to save it, as it were. And unfortunately, that hasn't occurred. And so I just, we have to get it done before yeah. it's gone. Well, and, we can't, we and, can't and, buy it. Who wouldn't love to buy that property? If, if the three of us could pull the money together and get David involved, sure we would. But what we're looking to do is at least document it before it's gone, before we don't have access to it anymore. Right. And uh, we're looking at going at the end of September uh, around the anniversary of the siding and putting her in the same place and showing you what it looks like and what it feels like and what she sounds like telling that story. So thank you in advance. Let's make this happen. Yeah. Yeah, we're very excited about this, guys, and we, we certainly hope that you are too. I think it's going to be uh, unlike anything you've seen, and this property is certainly, I mean, it's one in a million, probably more than a million because uh, of all the, all the activity going on that we've already got documented by these folks. Yeah, there, there is nothing else like this out there. The evidence is overwhelming. And yeah, this is not the sight of a one-time sighting, somebody driving through or somebody, you know, riding through see something and then people go back there over and over and over again. This is some place where people lived. And I mean, as you heard in the audio, stuff was popping off all the time uh, out there. This is, you know, again, if, if, if you want to go, you want to go all the way on this thing, this is a place where they hang out. So who knows what could be found there? Devil's Creek film.com. Well, I'm so-and-so. I was given this name by my parents. I've been to such and such a college. I've done these things in my profession. I produce a little bark. The Buddha says, forget it. That's not true. That's some story. That's all gone. That's all past. I want to see the real you you are now. Well, nobody knows who that is. Because we don't uh, know ourselves except through listening to our echoes consulting our memories. But then there's a real evil, and that again leads us back to this question. Uh, who are you? That is the real We shall see how they play with this exam by the cohorts to get you to come out of your shell and find out who you are.
they will say reincarnation means this, that if you sitting here now are really convinced that you're the same person who walked in at the door half an hour ago, you're being reincarnated. If you are liberated, you understand that you're not. The past doesn't exist. The future doesn't exist. There is only the present. That's the only real you that there is. The Zen master Dogen put it this way. He said, the spring does not become the summer. First there is summer, and then there is spring. Kind of recitation of a history. Straight, 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 straight. 